G'day and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to show you how to make a reverse eye spring. So it's fairly simple. Basically all we've got to really do and with a little bit of persuasion is pull the spring pack apart and turn the spring upside down believe it or not. Um, you can use a little bit of heat to flatten the spring or bend the spring the other way but let me show you how I do it. And if you're wondering why, some of you would know, but basically it lowers the car by the size of the eyelet. So instead of the spring running across the top, it runs across the bottom, which lifts that up and brings the car down. So that's why we do it. And I'll also re remove some of these um, leaves out to reduce the height of the pack and reduce the strength of the pack as well. I just had to close the shed door. Can you hear that? Haven't heard that sound for ages. That's some rain. We're kind of in a drought here in um, New South Wales at the moment, and um, that's the most awesome sound ever. And as fast as it came, it disappeared. Fair dinkum. So first of all, I want to thank my mate John for helping me out with a heap of parts. Um, he sorted out my front spring. He also got me a rear spring, a heap of brake components, and a few other bits and pieces that he's organising for me. Thanks, mate. I really appreciate it. Um, there's been a few people helping me with this one, and um, I'll name them as I go. Oh, that front axle, the 32 front axle, this one here, well, that was um, given to me by a really good friend of mine, Ronnie Williams. Ronnie Williams is like the grandfather of hot rodding in Australia. Um, he's been around forever, and he's Lincoln Williams, the guy who I got the Valiant from in my Valiant series, um, that's his grandfather. So, yeah, awesome. Hot rodding family through and through. Thank you very much. And it gives it some real Australian hot rod heritage right there coming from Ronnie. You never know what this thing was on. It could have been on anything back in the 60s. So first things first, we've got to pull the spring pack apart. Now, I don't expect this thing to do too much when I pull that centre bolt out, but I've got it clamped in the vice anyway, just to make sure. There you go, she's all loose. It did um, come apart a little bit, but wasn't aggressive whatsoever. So let's um, see what we've got to do to turn this spring around. It's kind of like turning the frown upside down, but it's kind of smiling at the moment. So yeah, sorry, dad jokes. So there's our main spring. Um, there is a couple of ways to do this, and the way involving heat is you heat them up to about 400 max, 400 Celsius, and Spring steel at 400 Celsius apparently is supposed to not change the um, consistency of the spring steel, but it allows it to be a bit more malleable. But um, it's malleable anyway. So I don't know if you saw my power hammer build. You can bend them. So let's go and bend it. And we'll flatten it out a little bit and we'll put it back together. It's not that hard. So all I do is jam it into somewhere where it's going to hold it, where we can put pressure on it. And at this, um, in this case, it is my F1 chassis for my F1, which I haven't got to. And uh, it makes a perfect jig for bending springs. Let's do this. trying to do is relieve the bend and you can see that's a lot flatter now but I'm, I'm not going to overdo it because there's a weak spot see that there that holds a weak spot the older the spring you've got more chance of breaking it and I have broken them there before this is a fairly new spring I doubt or I can guarantee you this is an original spring this spring isn't that old so yeah I think I've got enough straightness in that now to put this back together but let's go and have a look so I've just removed two of the longer springs out of the spring pack for a couple of reasons. Um, one is to reduce the spring height 
and two is um, the car's not running complete like it would have done from the factory and the weight isn't there so we're not running fenders we're not running a lot of stuff on the car so it's going to be lighter we don't need that much spring tension but what I am going to do to keep the clamping pressure for the front spring clamp the u-bolts is replace the height and put these underneath these are a couple from an old spring I had so I'll have the same clamping thickness that when I put the u-bolts on it'll still clamp to that front cross member okay but we'll put them underneath not on top our spring if you have a look whoop, for an example see the difference we're a long way away so what we need to do is get that squashed down so it meets up with the bolt that just dropped out there and then on top of that we put these two guys the bolt, the bolt length will be exactly right the thickness of the pack will be exactly right but we're going to have a spring that's probably about three inches or well, not even two inches lower than standard so with a two inches uh, drop and a two inch lower spring it gives it four inches that's the plan that's how they did it so with the vice and the help of a guide which in this case is a long screwdriver to keep the center bolt hole in line we can wind that together close it up and stick the bolt back in let's do it size spring with the same thickness spring pack that is probably around two inches lower than standard now add a two inch dropped 32 front axle that's some good dropness that's the dropness of the goodness mm, drop that. so now with the assistance of a couple of G clamps I should be able to pull it out of the vise Stick my bolt through, do it up, and we're ready to rumble. And there you have it, reverse size spring. All I've got to do now is give it a bit of a whack, line up the um. The leaves have a flat pack. Stick my locator bolts through there and we're finished. Easy as that. So there you have it. Reverse die spring for your hot rod. Done the old school way. Works on these semi-elliptic springs. It doesn't work on the rear spring on your Model A. The rear spring on the Model A is a very different shape. And good luck trying to do that. You can buy them. Um, I wouldn't recommend doing what I did on the rear and that's why most people just step their rear chassis so on this particular build we're not doing either we're just going to stick this one in and um, keep it traditional but yeah front end is going to be down I love it anyway that's it from me I hope you learned something from that but yeah part of the dry lake racer traditional pre-war hot rod build anyway stay tuned be good to your mates like subscribe all that stuff, and I'll see you on the next episode. Cheers. See ya.